So today I want to talk about the toughest microbe that was ever found. Well, most microbes can be destroyed quite easily either by heating or by using certain disinfectants such as alcohol, but not all microorganisms are that fragile. Some are extraordinarily tough and they can endure conditions that uh, would otherwise uh, kill almost uh, everything else. Now in this video today, I want uh, to take you through some of the microorganisms that are considered to be the most difficult to kill. So hi, hello and welcome again. Microbe Hunter here. Yes, uh, my name is Oliver and today I will look at some microorganisms that are able to survive under truly extreme conditions. So let's begin with uh, the bacterium called Bacillus. Now when the environment turns hostile, the bacterium has a survival strategy because it's able to produce so-called endospores. Now these are dormant structures that contain the bacterium's DNA wrapped up and protected inside multiple layers. And under the microscope, uh, those endospores, they appear as, as bright round structures within the bacterial cell. So unlike uh, the fragile acti actively dividing cells, uh, those spores, those endospores are designed to endure even very difficult conditions because they can resist drying, they can also resist chemical disinfectants, at least some of them, and most importantly they are able to survive heat. Now that's why boiling food contaminated with bacterial spores is, is often uh, not enough. Uh, yeah, a classic example is for example Bacillus cereus, which uh, produces spores uh, in rice. And if the rice is left unrefrigerated for a day, even if it was cooked, those spores can germinate and they uh, can actually start to grow um, and uh, they are able, able to survive the boiling process. And once conditions improve, then the, they basically they spring back to life and they start dividing um, and uh, that uh, can actually cause food poisoning. Now another member of uh, the Bacillus uh, genus is able to cause anthrax uh, and this one is also able to form spores. These spores are able to survive, they're very durable and they're able to survive in soil even for hundreds of years. And animals that are grazing um, on the meadow are able to pick up the spores from the grass, they can become infected and then yeah, basically they become ill, they die and new spores uh, are being produced. And this kind of keeps the bacterium circulating in the environment for many years. Yeah, and then uh, we also have Clostridium botulinum uh, and uh, it also is able to produce spores and its spores are famous for surviving in tin cans that were not properly sterilized. So for safe canning, the food must be heated up uh, well over 120 degrees centigrade in a pressure cooker. Um, yeah, of, uh, usually in industrial uh, machines do that. Um, so this ensures that both bacterial cells and also their spores are destroyed. Now, if not, the spores can germinate inside the sealed tin can producing the botulinum toxin which is actually one of the deadliest poisons known um, and this uh, can lead to the food poison called botulism and that's not something that you want to have. So spores are among the most durable forms of uh, microbial life uh, and uh, you can of course now argue whether they are actually st actively living because they're actually dormant stages. But researchers have also discovered microbes that are not in a dormant spore state uh, but still are able to thrive under extreme conditions. And in, back in 2003, 2003 scientists described Geogemma barossi uh, which is an archaeon which was isolated from hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. Now these are underwater hot springs that are formed by volcanic activity where very hot mineral rich water flows out from the earth's crust. And those archaea are similar to bacteria in appearance. Uh, they lack a nucleus, but uh, they're genetically quite distinct. So what makes a Geogemma barossi so remarkable is, is that it can actually grow at a temperature of 121 degrees centigrade. It's the same temperature used by autoclaves for sterilization in hospitals and research labs. And they can also survive short exposures to 130 degrees centigrade. Now most thermophiles, um, yeah, basically they max out at around 90 to 95 degrees centigrade but this microbe yeah, that quite surpasses them. Now heat and dryness are not the only extremes that life has conquered because some microbes are able to endure astonishingly high levels of radiation 
Deinococcus radiodurans, for um, instance, can survive radiation doses of about uh, a, a thousand times higher than what we humans uh, would be able to survive. Uh, ionizing radiation normally shreds the DNA into fragments, uh, it rips the DNA of the cells apart, but this bacterium has an almost uh, miraculous uh, repair mechanism in place that uh, can piece uh, the broken DNA back together again, even within hours. So it was first discovered in 1956. Um, basically, they were testing uh, canned uh, meat and they were exposing the meat uh, to uh, gamma radiation in order to sterilize it. So instead of heating it up, you want to radiate uh, the cans and the cans were basically expected to be free of microbes, but this uh, bacterium was able to grow anyway. Now researchers think uh, that uh, this radiation resistance is actually a side effect uh, of an adaptation to survive desiccation, which is drying out. And the damage uh, caused by drying and radiation looks very similar on the DNA level. So the same repair mechanisms protect against both. And that's why it is assumed that actually it's uh, a protective mechanism against drying. Now, physical extremes uh, don't stop at temperature and radiation because some microbes are also able to thrive at extreme pH levels. One archaeon, uh, yeah, for example, is able to live at hot acidic uh, soils near volcanoes and it can grow at a pH uh, levels uh, well uh, below 0.06, a pH of 0.06. Now that's between 10 and 100 times more acidic than the human stomach acid and it's able to survive by actively pumping protons across its membrane, um, keeping its cytokines plasma that's the inside of the cell closer to a neutral pH. And then of course there's also the other extreme, uh, yeah, you've got the so-called alkaliphiles and uh, there is a natrona bacterium which uh, can survive at a pH of 12 which is extremely caustic. So to give you some context here, the liquid at this pH would cause severe burns uh, to human skin. Um, yeah, but this uh, prokaryote, yeah, it basically for, for it, it's just fine. <laughs> so what's the bottom line here? Well, it's not, uh, there is no uh, single toughest uh, microbe overall. In Instead, different organisms dominate in their own niche uh, extremes and some withstand the uh, heat, others uh, endure radiation and still others are able to thrive in acid or alkali. And all of these uh, basically conditions are, yeah, um, can be survived by bacteria or archaea. Um, of course, there are also interesting uh, animals like tardigrades, uh, which can survive drying and freezing and even space exposure. Uh, but actually, when it really comes to pushing those limits of life, just as a said before, microorganisms like bacteria and archaea are actually the, the true record holders. Now that's uh, everything from me today. I wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. I hope that you considered this video informative and see you around in the next video. Bye bye.